WOKB, Winter Garden, Orlando. Good afternoon, Orlando. This is your host, Queenie of the Story. And welcome to our very first show here on WOKB. Give God a shout of praise, somebody. I am shouting his glorious praises here in the studio. I'm so excited. I hope that you all are just excited as I am. Welcome to the story. The story is going to share experiences of how we get through life's obstacles. Uh, we want to highlight the middle part of the story. You know, oftentimes we talk about the beginning and we talk about what the end result was. But this show wants to focus on the middle part of it. We are gonna, go, ugh, we're just going to come together, shake off the nervousness, come together on one accord and just talk about how we got over we're going to talk to some very, very interesting people. And in the studio today with me, see, we're both newbies to this, she said to me. And I'm so excited. We have with us today the first lady of District Number 19 and now candidate of the State Senate, none other than Victoria Sipling, the wife of our current Senator, Gary Sipling. So we're going to get in depth and Get down dirty and talk to her about some things on today. Also, uh, we're going to bring you some music from some of the hottest independent uh, artists out on the out in the industry today that I like to consider hot anyway. I've handpicked this music all myself. I tried to pull good music, music that had inspiration behind it. Something that's going to empower and lift and encourage people because that's what I'm really about. Empowering you to be a better you. So let's get ready to get started. If you want to call in, you're always welcome to. Our number here is 407-894-1680. We want to give a quick, quick Thank you to our sponsors for today's show, um, Inspiration Music Group. They're located over at Village Square, 927 South Goldwyn Avenue, Suite 212 in Orlando, Florida. There, they do artist development, event planning, graphic design, and more. Call them their resource for your industry and entertainment needs. Also, we like to thank our sponsor, CMJ Resources and Development Group, for all your business startup needs, training and business development, management and technical assistance. Uh, you want to know how to start a business, write in a business plan, record keeping, uh, personal payroll taxes and all that good stuff. Give them a call. They're also located over at Village Square, 927 South Goldwyn Avenue, Suite 212, Orlando, Florida. Their number is 407 407- 3403067 also we like to thank the Heart of Mercy Community Church is also one of our proud sponsors where the pastor there is none other than 69 himself pastor William Andrews giving them a big shout out over there Heart of Mercy listen i hope that you're ready get your pad and pencil we're going to give you some community news while we're here during our pause for a cause, which will come about the half hour mark and we'll bring you some community announcements and things of that nature. So make sure you have your pen and pad ready, but we encourage you call in gospel 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. This is Queenie. Put your hands together and give it up for my boy, Del Cicerone and optimistic for Christ off of his latest album entitled breakthrough. And it's called Get Up. Tell your neighbor, don't push me tonight because I feel it right now. Turn that track up. Turn the track up. Yeah. 
is on the line calling us. Where you at, Dale? I'm right now. Currently, I'm in Newark, New Jersey right now. Amen, my brother. You hear me rocking you out down here in Orlando. I hear you. I hear you. I'm trying to tell you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, I have to take care of family, even though we're not related by blood, but we're related by Jesus. That's right. And we're from the same holding town of Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, Newark is holding it down. We're Amen. holding it down. I had a busy weekend yesterday, so that's why I'm up there now. Okay, okay. I'm real excited about this one right here. Get up. We're trying to tell all the people, get up. Don't sit down. Don't sit on them. Don't that's, wait. Get that's up. That's right. Played everywhere. Now, get we, now up. we tell the people to play it in the hospitals. Now Amen. Laid, anyone that's laid up afflicted in the hospitals. That's right. Them to get that's up. right. That's right. That's right. Get up. No the longer, no longer will we will we be held bondage to those things that oppress us. We're gonna get up. That's right. Get out and get moving. That's right. Gotta do it. This song is being prophetic healing upon the people's body. So Amen. I'm just excited about this song right now. Amen. I really, really am. I'm excited too. I'm glad you sent it to me so I can share it with the people here. And for any of you who missed the concert the cd release concert for leandria johnson they missed a treat in you dale because you brought the fire of the holy ghost with you in that place that night we had a blast an absolute blast yeah we had an awesome 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 time i guess queen we had to bring that east coast church down to orlando just a little bit of it just a little bit of it you know and and you know you encouraged me down there too (laughs) you encouraged me i gotta give it to you encouraged me i try to hold back a little no that was all right which I still did, but yes. you know, it, it, it's all good. You know, it was all love. We had an awesome time there. Girl, yeah. Leandria, that's my girl. Y'all yes. get ready. Texas, got to get ready. We're starting our tour out in Texas. Me Amen. and her, Zacardi Cortez, Brother Haas from up here will be with us. So we're just excited. We're awesome. very, very excited. Awesome. I'm excited for you guys. I wish I had $5. I fly to Texas. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. All right, my dear. Thank you so much for calling in. And we're going to keep our ears and our eyes in tune online and on the radio to listen out for Del Cicerone and Optimistic for Christ. That's right. November 29th, 2011. Our CD title Breakthrough will be in every store. Walmart, Best Buy, Target. Go out. Team O4C. Go out there. Get it. Spread the word on Twitter, Facebook live profile, all these social networks that we got going on. Amen. Put it out there, November 29th. Amen. Cicero, 04C, CD title breakthrough. will be in all stores. Amen. Remember, Orlando, you heard it here first on this story. Thanks, Dale. Thank you, Queenie. Love you. Love you too, babe. All right. All right, all right. Let's keep it going. Keep that hand clap going because we have to announce the first lady. Our first lady of District 19. And now candidate for state senate here in Florida, none other than the incomparable, immeasurable, beautiful, smart, talented, 
illustrious. Everyone, put your hands together and welcome my guest, Mrs. Victoria Siplin. Good evening. Good afternoon, Queenie. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for having me oh, on your show, your, an, you. your inaugural show, your yes. first show. Um, I'm not a prophet, <laughs> but I want to prophesy uh -oh. and let you know that not, this show called The Story yes. will not only be number one on WOKB 1680 AM, six, I mean 1680 AM, uh -huh. but also in the Orlando, Central Florida area and nationwide. Hey, so I am man. excited I that I'm that. already on the number one show, Amen. The Story. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. How am I going to recover from that? I love it. Thank you. Listen, I'm so excited about you being here today. I'm excited to be here. From the moment I met you, just a little bit of conversation a that you and I ago. had. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago. I have just been so excited. I woke up that next morning. I was like, I want her for my first show. And it's some, it's some people look at it as, oh, well, sh you know, she's in politics. She's the wife of a senator. Oh, it's easy for her to get her. We're not going to just talk about politics. No. We want to cover the story exactly. of Victoria Siplin, the wife, the mother, the woman, the yeah, the Victoria the before Victoria all this. Before <laughs> all this. Exactly, exactly. And listen, you have your own story. Yes, I do. And that's what's, what's so intriguing about when I met you. I, I just want you to share just a little bit about you because you were an orphan. And that just blew my mind. How can an orphan go to run for state senate? How's that possible? Well, it, it's a long story. Um, I don't know if we have an hour, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. Okay. Um, of course, yes, I am an orphan, but um, there's more to Victoria than just that. Yes. A lot of people don't know that I am. You know, they right. see me out with my husband and they figured, oh, you know, she comes from middle class family, right. mom and dad. Right. But actually, I was born in Nassau, Bahamas. Um, in 1974 okay. um, after the sudden death of my mother okay. at the age of three and for some oh, reason wow. my father abandoned me and my sisters in the Bahamas so we wow. were in the Bahamas at the age of three um, on my own oh, and wow. I was brought here to the States you know at the age of three and you know we were taught that you know if you come here to the mm -hmm. United States mm -hmm. you get an education mm -hmm. and you can progress from there right um, I Went to high school um, in an urban high school, okay. Dillard High School. Oh, right here in Florida? Yeah, right okay. here in Florida. Okay. So, yeah, right here in Florida. Okay. Um, and I matriculated through high school with the American okay. dream that if you get a good education, um, graduate, go to college, yes. and, you know, your life will be a success. Well, it didn't turn out that way for me. Okay. Um, at the age of 18, after graduation, um, I was from the Bahamas. Therefore, I had to obtain legal residency in this country, which I, my family did not matriculate me through that process. So oh, wow. actually, after okay. high school, while filling out uh, the college applications, right. Hey, you get to the question where it says, you know, your legal residency. I'm like, what's that? You know, so right, right. of course I had several college scholarships that I could not accept. Oh wow! So I was on my own at 18 and had to survive. So how yeah. did, how did you get the motivation within you to be victorious? Victoria, well. <laughs> instead of being a victim, because most right. of us, you know, those obstacles are coming from all directions. Right. We just throw in the towel and want to give up and move yeah. on. So what yeah, was it? What yeah. Was in, it? in life you do when when you get obstacles and certain things, when your when your plans for your life right. does not work the way you want it to, you can either say, OK, I. I'm defeated. Right. Or you can say, hey, listen, I'm going to make the best of it. And, and so what I did was I became an entrepreneur at the young age. Oh, right. Yeah, after graduating. <laughs> yes, okay. I became an entrepreneur okay. where I started uh, producing beauty pageants where I would raise uh, funds for young ladies to go wow. to college. I gave $10,000 scholarships what? at the ripe age of 24, 25. I was doing this and also making wow. a living for myself. So, you know, you, you can either let your obstacles stop you right or you can just use those obstacles as a stepping stone to right. get to the next level amen so. amen well listen have you have you had any contact with your dad since um actually you, no. no you know you know i okay. feel like this you know if he 
he left us well mm-hmm. he left me in the Bahamas right. at the age of three right and if he wanted some contact with me right. he knew exactly where to find me okay. so you know okay. I'm okay. still here he knows okay. how to find me if and he, if he wants called me. today you would answer the phone oh, yes I would Amen. you know because you can sometimes you like I said you got to forgive people Amen. and you got to release that anger that's and move it. on that's it yep. that's it and let me ask you this how has those struggles being young not being a citizen, having to go through that whole process by yourself, learning it Mm -hmm. while you're still learning how to be independent and on your own. How has that formed you, you know, molded you as a mother and a wife? Well, you know, uh, a famous gentleman by the name of Frederick Douglass says, you know, without struggles, there cannot be progress. Go ahead now. You know, and I and I had to <laughs> use my struggles, even even with uh, my two boys. Right. You know, when I'm dealing with them, knowing what I had to go through mm-hmm. as a young child. For example, even through education, even though I was in honors classes, AP mm-hmm. courses. Mm-hmm. You know, now that my kids are in the public school system, oh, great. what I do is I have the ability to say hey you know now I had them take the gifted test right so now they're in the gifted program okay so my struggles just help me relate to some of the things you know that my kids go through and say I say hey we're gonna do it better that's right than how I did it right Right. you know so that helps me prepare them and as a wife, it helps me uh, say, for instance, and, and a lot of folks understand that my husband, you know, he's been under attack for a long time. Okay. And I know for me, loyalty is everything. Yes. So when yes. we go through our hard times, I'm still loyal to him. Amen. I'm going to stand by him. So right, by, right. by those struggles, help me be, uh, you know, as a mother right. and as a wife. Right. So, right. you know, I use all yes. my experiences. Yes, yes, yes. And she's strong, y'all. You can feel the power and anointing over her. Oh, Jesus. I applaud you for keeping your children in public school because oft times uh, public figures retreat to private school wanting the best of the best uh, we for, having that. <laughs> for them. I, I really, really uh, applaud you on that level. Was there anything in particular that influenced your decision to keep them in public school versus pulling them well, into private sector? Well, that ain't hard. Okay. It, it's sim- <laughs> it, that's simple. You know, we pay taxes and our taxes are used for public education. So why am I going to take more money Amen. and use it for private education? Amen. You know, I, like I said, I was taught pu- through public education. Right. And there's nothing wrong with public education. Right. right. You know, not only does it does it teach you a curriculum, but it also exposes uh, my kids and expose me through diversity. Yes. You know, such yes. as the social learning aspect of things. Okay. And, you know, we live in a global society and we want to make sure that our boys have the ability to relate to a diverse population. You know, because when they walk out there, not everybody they meet is from a middle class family. That's right. You know, That's so I want right. to make sure That's that my right. boys know how to deal with the kids in the hood like I had to. Right. They can right. deal with the kids that don't look <laughs> like them. You know, the kids that speak Spanish. Right. The kids right. that speak Creole. Right. I want to make sure that they understand that right. you're going to have to deal with everybody. Exactly. You know, exactly. so. And speaking of dealing with everybody. <laughs> mama. <laughs> See, I, too, come from a blended family, and, you know, at times it was a little challenging, but you have two children of your own, yes. and you have two children through marriage. Yes. Have you faced any challenges in blending that family and just making it work? I know it ain't peaches and cream every day, but just making it work. What are some of the things you do? Yeah, we, we have, and we've been blessed. Um, I have the best... I don't even want to call stepson or stepdaughter, but I have the best daughter and son. I mean, they're in college. Uh, One's a teacher. He teaches artistic children. And Angelica is at FAMU working on her master's in health. Okay. So so our relationship, like you said, you know, every day is not going to be peaches and cream. Right. But overall, we have a great relationship. They love their little brothers. And their little brothers love them. You know, they don't. And they ask questions, you know, because, you know, my little son, he came and he said, hey, mama, then, you know, you know, 
my husband's ex-wife. Oh, that she must be our stepmom. I'm like, nah, <laughs> baby, it don't work that way. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you just have to answer right, those right, questions, you know, because right. they're going to ask. Absolutely. You know, they're going to ask, well, why is so-and-so, why am I your mom, right. but she's really not your mom? Right, and, you know, right, so right. other than those questions, you know, right. it's, it's a perfect relationship. Right. And, you know, and like with every family, you know, the families are unique because the individuals are unique yes. that make up the family. Yes, yes. So, you know, and there are, cha- like you say, there are challenges. Yes. But other than that, you know, I got to say I've been so blessed Good. with, with you know, the ex-wife right. and I call you know, it the, the kids. mom-in-law. Yeah, the mom-in-law. See, we're mom-in-laws. You yeah, know. I, we, we don't have any issues <laughs> and, and it's Good. been perfect. And it makes the transition for the children a lot better, yes. a lot stronger because we are acting as adults Yes, and staying in our lane and doing what we have to do that is best for the kids and mm-hmm. putting their interests first. Exactly. That's extremely, extremely important in a blended family. And I always say, you know, don't bring your business in front of my children. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I am on with the incomparable Victoria Siplin. If you guys are not enjoying this interview, I don't know who you're listening to, but you need to tune in, listen, open your ears. You're getting some crucial information, not just about her, the woman. We talk about her, the wife, her, the mother. And when we get back from this music break, we're going to find out about Victoria, the business owner, the general manager. And the, all of that. All that good <laughs> stuff. Check us out. Here's Queenie and the story. And welcome, my friend, Mr. Franklin Bubby Bay. Come on, come on, put those hands together, everybody. How many of you know that all that we do is to the glory of God? Make some noise in here. Come on, let's say it. I sing it. I'm singing. I shout it. I'm shouting. It's all to the glory. It's all to the glory of God. I sing it. I'm singing. I shout it. I'm shouting. Say it. It's all. It's all to the glory of God. Come on, I dance it. To the glory. It's all to the glory of God. I like this. I heal it. I heal it. I testimony. I testimony. It's all to the glory. It's all to the glory. Come on, everybody of God. say to the glory.
Hallelujah. That was me and Bubby Fan from my live recording off my latest album entitled Grateful Live. If you don't have it, you need to get it. It will bless your soul immensely. But now it's time for Pause with a Cause. It's time for our community announcements. And I just got a few here I want to share with you all today. Um, first, are you at risk for developing diabetes? Please join us Saturday, October 1st, 2011 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Heart of Mercy Community Church, 1531 Mercy Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32808. The Heart of Mercy is a partner with Grace Medical, and they are meeting at the church to answer all any and all questions that you have about diabetes, they do free testing. They make sure that uh, you have all the health advice that you need and much, much more. Listen, they're always giving away something. They've got all kinds of prizes and they give food. If you're hungry, you know, stop on by and get a meal, get tested. It's best that we take care of our health. We have to be on top of it. We have to attend to it before it's too late. So please, please, please join us Saturday, October 1st, 2011 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. right at the Heart of Mercy Community Church, 1531 Mercy Drive, Orlando, Florida. Also, I'm inviting a few suspecting friends over for a hallelujah party. It's going to be Monday, October 31st, 2011 from 6 to 9 p.m. Right at the Heart of Mercy Community Church, 1531 Mercy Drive, Orlando, Florida. Candy, 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 face painting, prizes, basketball shootout, mini carnival games, and much, much more. Please, please, please bring your kids. It's going to be a hallelujah good time on Monday, October 31st from 6 to 9 p.m. right at the Heart of Mercy Community Church. If you're interested in help sponsor this event, please don't hesitate to drop off your bags of candy. Right there, Heart of Mercy Community Church, 1531 Mercy Drive. If you want to volunteer your time, come by, let us know so we can get your name on the list as well. Also, we have New Life Ministries and Pastor Brian Lucas, 9th anniversary. It's going to be celebrated on September 30th, 2011. That's on a Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. So please join Pastor Brian Lucas as they celebrate their ninth anniversary with guests, church and speaker, Pastor Jerry Owens from Joshua Generation Outreach Center. Come and experience a powerful move of God. Pastor Owens is a powerful, anointed, and prophetic vessel of God. He preaches the truth and holds back nothing. You are guaranteed to leave restored and ready to tear down the works of the devil. Come and get a prophetic word from Pastor Jerry Owens. This will be, again, September 30th, Friday at 7.30 p.m. at New Life Ministries. Pastor Brian Lucas is celebrating his ninth anniversary. How awesome is that? Not, you know, most pastors are burnt out and ready to close up the whole church after three to five years. Here's a man of God who has been standing for nine years. So if you can, you will, please go and celebrate them. Um, Pastor Lucas at New Life Ministries. The location is 3228 West State Road, 426 Suite 1016. That is in Oviedo. Um, for more information, please call 407-977-1212. You can visit them at www.brianlucas.org. For those of you who are independent artists in the area, for those of you who are interested in getting your music on the radio, the Gospel Announcers Guild of Orlando will meet on Monday, October 3rd at 6 p.m. at Village Square, 927 South Goldwyn Avenue, Suite 212, Orlando, Florida. If you want to be a part of the radio side of it, getting your music heard, getting it out there, getting it before the right people in place that can get you on the radio, you need to come take up membership in this organization so that you can get your music out there so you can learn more information about the industry, the ins and outs, because I'm going to tell you, if your business is not right, you will not succeed in the music industry. You have to know the business side of the music industry. So please join us. The Orlando Gospel Announcers Guild will meet Monday, October 3rd at 6 p.m. at the Village Square. That's 927 South Goldwyn Avenue, Suite 212, Orlando, Florida. Also, yours truly, Queenie, is going to be performing October 16th 
at the Gospel Now Family Fest happening over at the fairground. I know I'm not in a commercial, so I'm telling you personally and I'm inviting you to be there on time at 3 p.m. because Queenie is going to be opening the entire show. So you have to be at the park on time. And guess what, Glenn? I have a special, special special thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to bring Mercy Drive Mass Choir with me and introduce them to Orlando. So if you haven't heard, you're hearing it now. Queenie featuring the Mercy Drive Mass Choir will be opening the Gospel Now Family Fest on October 16th at the Central Florida Fairgrounds starting at 3 p.m. Be on time. So when you go to church, bring your sneakers and your jeans and your chairs and your blankets and all of that good stuff with you so you can leave straight from church going straight to the park because we're going on at 3 o'clock and you don't want to miss your blessing on that day. We'd also like to thank some of our supporters. Uh, We'd like to thank none other than our biggest supporter, Pastor William Andrews and the Heart of Mercy Church, First Lady Rosie Andrews, Kendra Smith, Minister Jerry, Mother Postel, Bowie's Professional Barbershop, also located at Village Square, 927 uh, South Goldwyn Avenue. He's Suite 126, so he's right in the front side of the building, straight on South Goldwyn. You guys have to go over there and get a haircut if you don't have a barber. This gentleman has been in the same location for over 40 years. Same location. So he's been in that building when it was other names before it even got to Village Square. So make sure you go by there and visit him and tell him you heard about it right here on the story and that Queenie sent you. We also like to thank Organo Gold, Miss Angela Kelly. She's a supporter of this show as well. Um, she sells organic teas. And let me tell you, that Organo Gold is a miracle worker. People don't sleep on it. I'm going to tell you to just go and get it and try it. I, I'm a recovering from a spinal injury and... A lot of times I wake up in a lot of pain. I've been drinking this tea on a daily basis, and it's not only helping me to deal with the pain better, but it's also helping to deal with my sinus issues and allergy issues. And daughter is singing, almost back up in that soprano section, because we're in the killer allergy season right now. So it's tearing up my vocal cords, but I thank God for Organo Gold and Miss Angela Kelly. For more information, visit www dot the ganoderma cafe dot com or you can call angela at 407-718-1235 now let's get back to our guest right here in the studio with us miss victoria siplin i know i'm supposed to go to a music break but i am just so excited i want to just just a few questions to talk about victoria the candidate because you you wear many hats you're a business owner, you're a general manager, you work at FAMU, you're a wife, you're a mother, you active in the community, you got your whole family active in the community. You, you go to church, you're involved with your children's school. How, how are you balancing all of these hats and roles? How are you balancing that? Well, Queenie, you know what? I say it like this. It just happens. It just you know, happens. it just happens. You understand, you know, <laughs> yes. we sisters sometimes have to wear a lot of hats I'm and right. we just make it happen. But to be honest, you know, you have to prioritize by knowing the importance of first being spiritually grounded, Amen. which we are. We are a family Amen. that is spiritually grounded. We make sure we keep God first Amen. before anything, yes. you know, and uh, not being only in your children's life, but you have to be also involved in their lives. Absolutely. You know, that is you so know, I can be important. in their life <laughs> and they, they see me, but if right. I'm not involved and I and if I don't let them know that, hey, mommy is here, I'm right. watching you when you, because we play golf. So if, if mommy's not there watching them, when they hit the ball, they turn around, they see me. Right. You know, that that assures them that I not only am in their lives, but I care about them. That's you right. Know? That's right. So, and also, you know, giving back to to the community we truly believe in luke 6 38 okay. where it says give, give and it shall be, be given, given unto you yes. good measure yes press down yes shaking together go on now. and running over shall men 
give unto your bosom. And I tell my boys, Ooh, it's Jesus. not it's not about giving money. Right. If you give love, you're yeah. going to get love. That's right. That's right. If you give time, you're going to get, get time. time. That's right. And like I tell my kids, that's if you right. give me attitude, you're going to get, get attitude. attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's one of the major yes, things, you yes. know. But that's true. That's so true. So got to keep them grounded. You got to. Got to keep them grounded and and, There's and, no better way to keep them grounded than the word of God. And also, right. Lead by example. Exactly. And Lean also, you know, and, and, and as a woman, and you understand this, you also have to have that me time. Yes. You know, the Lord. me time. Yes. That, so, you know, so I also take me time. Yes. Because I need that. Jesus took me time. <laughs> On the seventh day. So we day. <laughs> have to take me exactly. time. Exactly. I was sharing that with um, our host today, Determine, yeah. who's in, here in the studio with us. I said, you know, sometimes life seems so overwhelming. You look mm-hmm. at your calendar and yep. it seems like your whole day is booked. And you're saying, when am I going to have some time for me? Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm just going to take some time yeah, for me. Because if Jesus can retreat right. from the people, the disciples, and just get unto himself, because that's the time when we get renewed, exactly. refreshed, yeah. and we need that so we mm-hmm. can keep going and being a part of everyone's lives, the children, the community, so on and so forth, because you spread yourself thin. Yep, and you're going to be no good You'll to be yourself no good, or anybody no else. Good. Exactly. Now listen, because this part was intriguing to me when I read your bio. You have been interested in politics since high school. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. Yes, ma'am. I started when I was 17 years old. Get out of here. Yes, ma'am. I ran for Miss Dillett. And, and you know, when you run for the misses of your school, Mm -hmm. it's normally the popular girls, the girls that, you know, dress the best. And and believe it or not, I was a nerd. Oh, you? you? Yes, ma'am. I was a nerd, a bookworm. And, you know, we got our clothes from a thrift store. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. I got hand-me-downs, and my clothes came from from the thrift store. Goodwill. Wow. All through school. And it was Goodwill. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It was, uh, hey, it was fine for me. Amen. So I said, you know what? Those young ladies thought just because. Right. Right. They were popular. Right. Or just because they had a certain status that it was for them. So I said, you know what? I'm going to run for this seat to represent my school and let people see that, hey, no matter where you come from or what circumstances you're placed with, you right. can still be a success and be a victorious. It, you know what I'm saying? Amen, Victoria. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I ran for Miss Dillard, and I had six other opponents, and I came in first place. Awesome, awesome, In the 11th awesome. grade, yes, ma'am. And, and you that's a, an example for mm-hmm. those students who aren't popular. Exactly. Who think, I can't I do it. I'll never win. I'm not as popular. Nobody knows me. But you had a, you you had to you have had to put an the work in. If you, you put the work in, yes, you just got to work. Yes, you know. And and like I said, a lot of times I tell people, you know, opportunity is often missed by most people mm-hmm. because it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. And Go that's ahead. by Thomas Edison. Go ahead now. So hey, that is you so work. true. And a lot of people that are rich are in coveralls overalls that's right raggedy you, sneakers mm-hmm. and jeans and, and you they, will walk and right to past work. them mm-hmm. and they're working making millions and here we are dressed to the nines yep. done up from the flow up and don't have nothing exactly and that and that allowed me to become part of student government okay okay you know so and then I was exposed to statewide politics okay. when I became a page for the Senate. Now, tell us what a page is, because, you know, I'm not very knowledgeable in the Good. political <laughs> arena. That's the, I'm, I'm, let's be real here. Yeah. And a lot of us aren't. We really right. don't pay no attention to politics. The only time we vote is when it's the president's race. Exactly. And then now we the want our voices election. to be heard mm-hmm. when we really need to start early early Mm -hmm. at a local stage because those immediate laws and changes that are happening really affect our community and our children and half of the times when laws are passed Mm -hmm. and they affect and you get that trickle down effect right it's too late that's right that's right they didn't do their due diligence and vote when it was time for them to vote right so then they start complaining but it's too late that's right when you don't vote you get what you get that's right but so what is a so, page? So a what Senate is a page? page is actually a program that affords students 
with hands-on experience in Florida's government. The students are allowed to work with the legislatures and witness the lawmaking process during the regular session of the Florida legislature. Oh, wow. Yep, and participating students come from all across the state of Florida. Okay. To assist members okay. of the legislature, legislation, legislature in carrying out the work of the people. So I had the opportunity in 1992 to work with the first African-American female state senator, Carrie Minks, and also the first African-American male from Florida, and his name was Gerardo out of Jacksonville. Amen. So I worked side by side with these two legislatures. At 17. At 17 years old. And you you haven't lost your spark. No, ma'am. Your fire, your desire, no, nothing ma'am. Even for though, politics. Even though after graduating at the age of 18, life took me on a different journey. Right. But I'm still back. That's right. You haven't lost your focus. Hello. It's mm-hmm. been a call on your life yes, ma'am. since you were very, very young, obviously, because you're still there. But we're going to go to another music break really, really quick, and we're going to hear Determine and offer his upcoming CD entitled... Sac passe. La boule. Yeah. <laughs> Street 
Gospel 1680 WOKB. You're listening to Queenie on the story here on Gospel 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. Listen, you're welcome to call in at any time. We're at 407-894-1680. When you see me in the street, say sock passe. And don't forget, not boule. Amen. <laughs> if you don't know, listen, we are in the studio here with none other than the first, the first lady of district number 19, our uh, now candidate for state senate. She is the first black female from central Florida to run for state senate. No, to be elected. We're going to be elected. Going to be elected in the state Senate. And the first Caribbean American ever in Florida to run and win. To be elected, yes. To be elected into the state Senate. Because we prophesy. We prophesy in this right now. We're prophesying this right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we have a caller on the line. Come on, caller. Minister uh, Gary Haskell is on the line with us. Hello, Minister Haskell. How are you? How you doing, Miss Queen? How I'm you doing, Victoria? Good. Hey, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm out here uh, making people aware of uh, who we want our next uh, state senator to be from uh, this district to uh, take uh, Gary Shippen's place and uh, having a lot of flies. And that. people uh, are really excited about you running. And I he's... get a lot of I get a lot of feedback from people in the churches, and they. They're really excited. I'm glad you're on the air today. Yes, so, sir. But I, but I, I want to ask you one question, Victoria. Yes. When I met you three years ago, I didn't hear this, or I didn't foresee you would be running for uh, the seat that your husband uh, currently holds. Uh, when did it, uh, did you know all the time that you was going to? Uh, Run after he uh, had to relinquish his Well, Gary, you know that's a that's a good question. And three years ago, and and I and I this is how I work. You know, whatever my role is, I, right. I do that very well. Right. My role has been, you know, a wife, a mother, and I've also had to represent the district nineteen as their first lady. And right. as the first lady, it's not my job to shine or to steal my husband's right. thunder. Mm-hmm. So every time you saw me, I was in the capacity of being his helpmate. Right. You know, so now we're switching the roles. Right. So now you are seeing the Victoria, the candidate. Okay. You, you, you but, feel but me, my brother? And, 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 I, and that's why I asked you that, because I never saw that in you. I never heard that from you, because mm-hmm. I, I remember you saying to me, uh, when I first met you, you know, uh, you know that that we are uh, that that we have a law office, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, and it was never like you know you lifted up the, the, the seat or you you mm-hmm. were just doing the you was just doing the work of the law office, and and you were going about the business of handling cases and and, yeah. and, and and allowing people to know that we have a law office here. Yes. And I, I really appreciate and that. You know I love you. I know, and, I know you. And I'm running like a race horse <laughs> out here for you. And uh, I have no doubt, and I am a prophet. Amen. See, I am a prophet. Amen. I have Amen. no doubt that you're going to be our next state I, I receive that. Amen. <laughs> and, that mean, and that only I, means that I did my job well. Amen. Uh, of course. Amen. Well, that, you know what he says, those that are faithful, those that are just with a little, he'll make rule over much. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless, God bless, you, bless you too. You. Thanks for calling in, Minister Haskell. Listen, he's opened the door, so let's just mm. ask. Let's <laughs> just ask. See, your husband is currently state center. Senator, and uh, now you're going to be running for his seat. He has been very instrumental in getting many bills passed during his tenure. He has fought uh, to stop foreclosures and better health care in this community and lower drug prices for seniors and numerous other things. So let's just ask the gritty question. Why you? What makes you qualify to step up and out and fill that seat because that's what the people want to know. Yeah. You know, they standing mm-hmm. with their hands on their yes, heads. Yes, talk yes. about what makes her them. think mm-hmm. she could do this. And I don't blame them. And that's what they need to do. Yes. You know, if if we would, if our community would stand up and ask the real questions. Yes. And not only you tell me what you have done, you know, but show me some of the things you have right, done. Right. And I think our whole lives 
in for the past 11 years has been a testimony to our commitment to the community. Okay. Um, my goal for this community is geared towards being a voice in Tallahassee to help bridge the social and economic gap okay. that we that we face okay. here today um, by fighting to bring jobs to our neighborhoods that would help reduce the unemployment rate in our community because you know it's higher. Right, right. You right. know, when they say the unemployment rate is this, right. we can triple that right. for our community. Right, right. Um, I want to be a voice to ensure that all children are able to receive quality education that they deserve. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. in the plan to work for increased health care services. Okay. We need more funding mm-hmm. in health care mm-hmm. for our seniors because I grew up with no health care, believe it or not. Wow. You know, so we ne- yeah, so we need yes. funding yes. for health care yes. for our children and our seniors. Mm-hmm. You know, we need, like I said, business opportunities for minority businesses, you know, to give mm-hmm. them a chance right. so they can hire some folks in their community. Right. And then to improve transportation. Okay. And and, and not only, you know, major transportation, right. I'm talking about little transportation, like the roads that we drive on right. with all the potholes. Right, right. And all right. the bumps. Right, right. <laughs> let's, let's start with fixing those. <laughs> You know, right, I right. know Sun Rail and high speed. That we need those, right. but we also need to take care of the immediate things, like Obama wants to do with building new schools building and renovating schools. the schools yes. and putting money down on the ground right. for immediate right. jobs. Right, and he's and he's pushing really hard right yeah, now. Yeah, they fight him all the way. They're that man can't do nothing way, right. Exactly, and I know that he has a huge initiative to bring jobs back yeah. to America. Yeah, do you have anything specifically it, you can give us a little insight on what? Which way you're going to help to bring jobs into the community? Because that's the biggest well, thing. Yeah, like I said, One with, with some of this funding that, you know, that Governor Scott has been rejecting, okay. you know, we need that funding so we can have immediate jobs, like I said, for the roads and, right. and the bridges and the school renovations and the building of new right. schools, just like they're building Evans High School right. that brought a lot of jobs right, right. to the community. You got the Paramore Redevelopment Project. So, okay. so you got a lot of projects. Projects right. That need local funding. Okay. So and also with um, with the homeowners, you know, we need more funding to help people become first time home buyers. And for those okay. who are struggling in foreclosure, trust me, I understand yes. about foreclosure. Yes. Been there, done that. Got about two t shirts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. So okay. so I understand. We need funds that help people right. stay in their homes. Right. Oh, we have another caller on the line. Uh, Shirley, are you there with us? Yes, I am. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for calling into the story. Oh, thank you. Hi, Miss Shirley. Hey, Victoria. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm going to make you know who I am. I'm CJ's um, aunt. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know the one that helped your husband get back (laughs) Yes, I remember CJ. That boy worked hard, 2, 3 (laughs) o'clock in the morning. I remember CJ. Yeah. But my question for you is, given that we have an overwhelming amount of Republicans in the Senate and in the House, in the uh, Florida legislature, what is it or how is it that you plan to influence uh, those legislators that are maybe against whatever you are proposing? How are you going to convince them that this is the right thing to do and that they should uh, uh, support what you're proposing if you were elected to well, the uh, Senate. Well, Ms. Shirley, I'm glad you asked that question. And, and I understand through being up there, you know, with my husband and how he has uh, acquired certain relationships. You know, when you know that the Republicans are in power and they are setting forth laws and passing laws and passing a budget, You know, you have to not create enemies, but you have to let them understand how you feel and you have to do things for the best interests of your community. So you have to go up there and create relationships. Yes. And that's what it's about. If you respect them, they're going to respect you, regardless if Republican or Democrat. Now, those Republicans and those Tea Party people up in D.C., that's something different. I don't think they want to... 
bargain, not bargain, but I don't think they want to work right. with the Democrats. But the ones in the Tallahassee, they're different. So I think that's important. Well, thank you, Miss Shirley, for calling in, and we thank you, Miss Victorious Victoria Sipling, for joining us today and okay. being my very special first guest here on the story. Thank you. We have had a blast. We want to just thank all of our wonderful sponsors: CMJ Resources, Inspiration Music Group, the Heart of Mercy Community Church, uh, Pastor William Andrews, First Lady Rosie Andrews. Uh, Kendra Smith, Minister Jerry, Mother Postel, Bowie's Professional Barbershop, and the uh, Organo, or, oh, I'd have messed up the name, <laughs> the uh, Ganadermacafe.com with Miss Angela Kelly with the organic teas. We thank you all. I just want to leave you all with this note, Philippians 3, 13 and 4. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high, call, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Please remember, join me next week when my guest will be Miss Faye Bailey Lucas. If you don't know, we're talking about a woman with a soul spirit of just giving, giving, giving. And she gives so much she has to open up more and more salons. So she has work for the people that she's given scholarships to. So she'll be here with me next week as we continue the story right here on WOKB 1680, your urban empowerment and inspiration station. Remember, it's never too late to edit the tape. Tell your story today. God bless. We often talk about the beginning of the story and what the end result was, but we very rarely talk about the middle. The story is going to highlight the middle of the story. We want to help you get from this to that. Hi, this is Queenie. Be sure to join me here on Mondays from 1 to 2 p.m. right after the Pastor Reba Live Show right here on Gospel 1680.